YouTube CEO just published this big annual letter with tons of stats about the platform and a lot of information about what the content creator industry might look like this year. I'd say one of the biggest takeaways in this letter is how much YouTube is just becoming like any other streaming platform or television. YouTube CEO said basically people are now watching YouTube videos the way that they used to sit down and watch television shows. He also said that globally viewers now watch more than a billion hours on average of YouTube content on their TV every day. He also said that YouTube, when you compare it to other streaming platforms, is actually the leader in streaming watch time for the past 11 months. But these changes in viewer consumption patterns has actually led creators to think really differently about the content that they produce, with an increasing number now considering how to optimize their content for a living room experience rather than just people watching YouTube on their phone. But in the last three years alone, the number of creators that received the majority of their watch time from people watching on the big screen, as in television, increased 400%. This is particularly true for people who make children's content, such as Miss Rachel, who the CEO actually shouted out. YouTube CEO even claims that a growing number of people are watching YouTube shorts on their television set. I really wonder who these users are coming home and watching YouTube shorts on their televisions, but I kind of imagine that it's children because kids come home from school or daycare today and oftentimes their parents or the kids themselves will just throw on YouTube on their TV, much the way that we used to watch, you know, Barney or Sesame Street. When it comes to YouTube shorts, I guess these kids are just watching Skibbity Toilet on the big screen. As YouTube begins to mirror more traditional streaming platforms and creators create more high quality content, the CEO of YouTube also said that creators should be recognized as next generation studios. They're redefining the entertainment industry with top notch storytelling that can no longer be dismissed simply as user generated content. And to me, this totally makes sense. While 10 years ago, most YouTube channels were just kind of like a person in their bedroom with maybe a couple assistants, top YouTubers today have content empires. I mean, think of people like Mr. Beast or Marquez Brownlee. They have whole staffs and production teams behind them, and they really do mimic traditional entertainment media companies. I think all this YouTube news is really interesting in the context of TikTok. I wrote another story recently about TikTok pushing more long form horizontal content. Now I think you have YouTube trying to chase Netflix and other streaming platforms and compete with them. And then you have TikTok, which is also trying to get in the ring and compete with YouTube. Overall, we're just seeing this increasing fluidity and merging between the traditional entertainment world and the social media entertainment world. You had Netflix mentioning TikTok on their earnings call last year. You have all these platforms kind of competing with each other. And now increasingly streaming platforms also have shown willingness to work with digital talent. You have Mr. Beast doing his deal with Amazon Prime Video, developing a show for them. And then you have the YouTube group, The Sidemen in the UK, working on a Netflix project. And I think we're just gonna see more and more overlap with a lot of content creators moving into streaming and streaming platforms looking at the content creator industry. And I think this is all very different than what happened like a decade ago when linear television was trying to capitalize on like YouTube creators and they gave Lily Singh, God bless her, this like talk show. They tried to make Fred the movie. I mean, they did, it flopped. But what's different now is I think today's creators are a lot more sophisticated. They're a lot more advanced. I feel like today you just have this sort of like multi-hyphenate talent where you have a lot of people that are content creators, but also actors, but also screenwriters. And they kind of do a lot in the entertainment world and they can work really fluidly, whether it's on the internet or in more sort of like traditional formats. But the one thing I wonder is as social media content becomes more and more professionalized and there's this bigger and bigger gulf between like these highly produced, you know, professional content creator videos and just like average user content, where will that leave platforms like TikTok? Because I would argue what made and what makes TikTok so compelling is actually the user generated content. A lot of us come to TikTok, yes, for like some really hilarious, amazing, high quality videos from creators, but we also come for like drama and tea and like fights about, you know, who showed up where in a lesbian bar. I think those back and forths and controversies and low quality videos are actually what keeps people really engaged. Also, I know that all these platforms want long form content because it's much easier to monetize. The ad dollars are better, we get it. But personally, I don't want TikTok to become a long form platform. I feel like YouTube is a destination. Netflix is a destination. And TikTok, there's so much like serendipity to it. Anyway, would love to hear what you guys think. And if you wanna read my full story, it's on WashingtonPost.com and I've linked the letter uh, that the YouTube CEO wrote in that story as well so you can read the full thing for yourself. There's tons of other great information in there.